2020 has had some incredible stock market moments. A highlight being, I remember being sat at work back in March and I was just watching the screen and the stock market had the call outs. It closed down to 15 minutes because it was falling and everyone was panicking and selling. And you can see here, the S&P 500 dropped 34%, meaning that the top 500 US companies collectively fell 30% within, what was that, 23rd of March. Within about 20 days, the whole market completely collapsed and we went into a bear market. Though many people sold and lost a lot of money in these in that trough at the bottom of the market, there's also some great buys to be had, particularly in the uh, travel sector, um, service, like foods and goods and restaurants. And luckily, I picked up on some of those. So I wanted to make a quick video going through my whole portfolio and some of my highest return in investments, both percentage wise and also total value, how much money and physical cash I've actually earned from them. So I wanted to start off going through my totals. So for this year, you can see this is my portfolio. I've hit a huge landmark uh, start of 2021. I've hit 25,000 portfolio value and my profit is so close to getting 5,000, which would be really nice to see another five. It ended 2020 uh, just over 4,000. And then this month or this week uh, in January 2021, since crypto has been taken off so much, my portfolio has just skyrocketed again. So it's really nice to see these put like over £500 in, in one month. It's a really quite encouraging sign to see. But it's also quite a scary thing that can go down again. But with a cost averaging approach, I'm pretty confident I'll be able to maintain it. And I'm going to keep looking for good buys if there is any other future downturns like we've seen. So jumping straight into it. So you start off my trading 212 portfolio. You can see the overall return is just over £1,500. And I started back in March, so I was investing almost right at the bottom of the market. I sold a few things and bought back in at different times, but collectively, I've earned my current value, my current holdings, 22%, just over £1,500. In them, some of my best buys have been the Bitcoin ETF or Bitcoin ETP, which I've deposited £1 in and returned 103%. So as I said, I want to go through some percentages, but obviously that was just a silly one because they're actually closing the fund down and I just wanted to see what they're removing it from Trading212 and I just wanted to see how that plays out for people who hold it and how it actually works with the closeout only functionality where they restrict you buying it. So that's why I put that in there. I do own uh, Bitcoin, uh, but I own that on other accounts, which I'll get to later. So... Other than that, some of my actual buys that I actually thought was quite good was BNM. So you can see here, I only had a small amount in it, but it actually returned 38% over the year. I bought at a pretty good time, slightly after the uh, March lows. So you can see I bought um, in June where it landed there, and then it's just been going up. This has obviously been where the um, all the other non-essential stores have closed down. So the result, this boosted uh, department retail stores um, or food like retail outlets and big bulk buying areas such as B&M and Costco. You can also see the Costco share just further down. This has done pretty well as well. It's only 6% up at the moment, but this is a really stable and healthy stock. So that's really nice to see it's held and maintained its thing. It's also a strong um, dividend pay and has been doing so for many years. Other than this, I mentioned the airline industry. Um, EasyJet, I've got one share there. This is mainly because of the free shares from Trading212. Again, I want to do a quick plug. If you haven't already signed up Trading212, I guarantee you'll get a great return from that. And as you can see here, these are all the free shares I've received from all the um, all of you guys signing up. So if you haven't signed up to Trading212, Coinbase or Free Trade, sign up to all of them. You can get about £350 worth of free stuff. So it's really worth doing. I earned just over £580. You can see the average price is about um, £10 per share. So again, link in the description if you haven't signed up. Trading212, Free Trade and Coinbase. It'll help us both out, so it'd be really cool if you do that. So jumping back into my buys, the other airline that I really liked and I'm really quite proud of buying was International Airline Groups. I've talked about this quite a few times in a few videos, but it's because I bought in at such a perfect time. I bought at 91 pence. If I scroll down here, you can see. So my average price is 91 pence, and this was literally right at the bottom of the market. I really couldn't have timed it much better. And not only is it such a good time in the market, it's also good for timing the market. So long term, I expect this to continue going up and hopefully get back to its highs about the four or five hundreds. Um, and now that, that would see me a four or five fold return of my money. I'm expecting that in the next five to ten years when travel starts to pick up again. I know 
uh, 73% return currently is still really nice. Um, and obviously with all my high return and investments, I wish I put more money in. But International Airline Group is one I'm still thinking about putting more money into because I really do have a lot of faith it will continue to do good and continue to increase. So other than that, on trading 212, my others have been pretty average. And as you know, the most of these are dividends because I've created a dividend pie. So my total dividends for the year, while I'm at, while I'm at it, just to show my total return. So if I just open up the app here, so I'll sign me up the website, I can show you my total return just on my dividends. So I'm opening it up here and you can see my total dividends throughout the year from April. Um, and obviously back in April, I only had a small amount of funds. Um, I cons cons consistently invested and that has added up to £152 of completely passive income. However, I did directly reinvest it. So trading 212 was a great little money builder for me, both in terms of free shares, dividends and growth with some well-selected stocks. And also some not well-selected, but I'm hoping in the long term, they'll continue to do a bit better. Now I want to go on to my uh, crypto portfolio. This is another one I'm really happy with and one that I think I have a lot of faith to continue to keep growing. Currently, again, Coinbase doesn't show your actual profit or loss, but this has been my collective biggest and best investment. So if I go onto my uh, spreadsheet here, it shows you how much I've deposited and then how much it's worth. And I returned 146% on my uh, cryptocurrency investments. So I started back in, when did I start? I started back in end of May, beginning of June, and I consistently just put uh, around 50 to 100 pound in a month, sometimes 60, sometimes 80, sometimes around that kind of benchmark. So I've been doing that consistently for the last six months, coming on to seven now. And you can see where I've just been cost averaging. Again, I put a video showing how this all works um, in my previous video, so go check that out. But it's cost averaging approach um, where the market stayed kind of stagnant for a while and kind of went below, up and down. I built up a quite a strong amount of capital. So I built up about six, six, seven hundred £700. And all my returns have been in the last two months. Again, I'll go back to the sheet here. You can see I was minus. I made £50 in one month. Just... I made £11 a month, I lost the £50, which is a whole month's gain, then I suddenly got £73, then in one month I earned just under over £300, then £100, and this January 2021, this week alone, I've earned over £400. So that just shows you time time in the market, buying and holding really does pay off sometimes. I am maybe thinking about selling, but again, I think for the long term, for crypto in the next 5-10 years, I think it's still got a lot of potential to grow. So this has been my best investment. Um, again, a bit of rundown of my portfolio. The majority, you can see 55% is in Bitcoin and then Ethereum. Uh, these two are going to be my main, uh, going to be the main points I invest in. And I think altcoins are quite interesting, but with the recent Ripple um, allegations going on, you can see up here, Coinbase has warned about it. They've got the SEC's um, lawsuit against uh, Rip the Ripple CEO, I believe. Again, I, I don't know too much about it. I haven't really looked into it, but it just gives me a bit of a weary feeling about altcoins. So I'm not really going to sell any of these because obviously they still do have some upside potential, hopefully. But I think the ones that I do trust is Bitcoin and Ethereum. So I'm going to continue putting money into these um, mostly. And I might put 10, 20 quid in the on odd altcoin just the hopes of that crazy, you know, 50, 70 like, times return. But for the long term, Bitcoin and Ethereum is where my uh, money is going to be going. So now... Finally, I want to go on to my Hargreaves lands down. So this is where I have my stocks and shares ISA and also my lifetime ISA. These have both my largest holdings in. Um, as these are all in mutual funds, so I think they're relatively safe. Um, we've got like the we have index funds, but also managed funds. Um, and I know people say the managed funds tend to outperform or underperform the actual just index funds, and they managed funds underperform index funds in the long term. But this year has been quite phenomenal growth in my. Um, in the managed funds in the short term. So you can see here the best performing one, if I scroll down, you can see all of them has been my Bally Gifford American. And this is because, and you can see in the top tens here, holds Tesla, Shopify, Amazon, Zoom, Netflix, and Google at the Alphabet Company. And that's this has all been from, these are companies that have absolutely thrived in the pandemic, hence why they've shot up so much. Um, where I kind of bought at higher prices, the total return looks smaller than what it was. Um, you can see on the lifetime I said it's similar, it's about 43% on one fund in one year. So if I scroll down, you can see the actual five-year performance of this. Again, it's the Bally Gifford American Fund. So I'm going to scroll down and show you the yearly performance on a five-year basis. So it returned 34%, 23%, 10%, 11%, 12%, 14%, 
29% and 113% this year. Again, the reason why mine only shows 40 is because I had money in the fund, and then when I bought more at a higher price, it shows the average return to be a less. But still, it's a phenomenal growth, and you can see how much money I've made in that one fund alone. It's about £350, and collectively, all these mutual funds have performed really well. So on Hargis and Down, I mentioned this before as well. Um, at the beginning of the video, I said about how the, the food sector, like restaurants and stuff, was hit really hard in the service industry by the pandemic. Um, so this led to some more really good buys, such as my Mitchell and Butler shares. So these own uh, Toby Carvery, Miller and Carter, companies like that, restaurants like that, pubs and things out of town. Um, and this has returned from a fringe pound investment, it's returned £200. So that's a 67% return. And the funny thing is, whilst I thought it was a good buy and I thought it was going to go up, the main reason I bought it as well, and the reason why I bought it on the Hargis Lands Down, is to actually get the shareholder benefit. So every year you get a discount booklet for all of their restaurants. Um, I think it's about 25, 20% off. And that's the main reason I bought it, um, among a few other reasons. Again, I've gone into detail on that. But for the 2020, that has been the second best performance stock I have just behind International Airline Group. And I know I said finally on Hargis Lands Down, but I thought I'd give a shout out to uh, Free Trade. Um, whilst I do prefer trading 212, it is quite a good app and they are bringing out some more updates which make it a lot more usable. Um, again, you can get free share. If you might have a trading 212 account, you might want to get a free one on free trade. Again, you can sell it and then you can deposit into 212 if that's what you want to do. Um, but I thought I'd give a shout out to Plug Power. Um, whilst I didn't buy it and it was a free share, you can see here it's returned 353%, um, which is just astronomical returns. Again, this is kind of a, the Tesla hype, Neo and all them kind of crazy investments that people have done. Um, and obviously I don't have any, um, my own money into it. This was a free share that I just got, but I thought it was worth putting in there just to see what high performance and kind of the odd shares, things that I personally wouldn't have bought, um, just how well it's returned this year, because it's been such a wild year in the stock market. So that kind of sums up all my, well, all my best performing returns that I've gotten throughout my portfolio in 2020. Again, this is the first year that I've actually done a full, um, investment cycle thing that I've actually hold again if I go back to my overview I actually only started recording this data back in May when I had deposited just over £10,000 I started in September 2019 and I started recording in May 2020 so I had a good uh, seven months of to save up that 10 grand and it's just grown and blown up astronomically so I'm really happy with my returns um, do let me know what you guys have returned down in the comments below I'll be really interested to hear that because it's always interesting to see how people's investment portfolios are doing so anyways, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for watching.